The old way of shelling maize cobs, a long and tedious job, almost a symbol of a subsistence agriculture where producing food was just a daily struggle to survive. Rwanda, Burera district, Muzubeya, a village on the high hills of the northern province. A group of farmers, members of the local cooperative of maize producers, are bringing their harvest to dry in their storehouse. High population density and consequent land parceling are threatening challenges for farmers trying to improve their living standards. But just increasing production may not be enough. If farmers don't have a market for their surplus, even an abundant harvest could end up with frustrating disappointment. Farmers might even have to reduce prices to be able to sell all they have produced. In Muzibeya, the cooperative is now offering a chance to solve this problem. It is showing farmers how to add value to their crops, a better way of drying maize cobs, and the elimination of dirt and breakage improve the quality of the grain, and small, inexpensive machines enable shelling to be done 10 times more quickly than using the fingers, and it's less painful. The good practices that farmers are learning at the cooperative can also be replicated at home. Higher quality products can guarantee higher cash incomes to cover basic and maybe even superfluous family needs. Before joining the cooperative, I used to cultivate the land in a traditional way without using agricultural inputs. But when I joined it, I modernized my approach. Now I work and cultivate following this method, and my harvest is much bigger. Apart from what I learned, the cooperative helps me to sell my crops at a better price. So it's not like before when I didn't know where to sell it. Now after the harvest, I go to the cooperative and we sell together all we have produced. Still, even producing better may not be enough to improve farmers' living standards. So the project supported the cooperative to stipulate an agreement with the local mill. Another step to add value to the farmers' efforts. Grinding the maize and selling the flour to more profitable markets in the neighboring towns, as well as in Kigali, the capital, or outside Rwanda. Finding a mutual interest, what benefits the miller will also benefit the farmers. Burundi, a watershed near Kurundo in the northern part of the country, produces here worked on an individual basis, mostly marginalized from the local economy, often forced to deal with intermediaries under unfair arrangements. Now they work in a cooperative and their success inspired the formation of another nine cooperatives that joined their efforts by forming a union named Umugara. From the beginning, they were all trained and supported in a project implemented by FAO through funds from the Italian Development Corporation, which assisted value chain actors to create business-to-business -business linkages, following three basic principles, building strong institutions, developing capacities and improving access to infrastructure and finances. This is a food security project, which is a regional project. It involves four countries, Burundi, Rwanda, Uganda and the DRC. The main objective of this project is to increase revenue 
of target groups. We uh, achieve this goal through uh, three outputs. The first one is to increase market-oriented production. The second output is uh, to increase access to fair market. And the third one is uh, to promote value addition in rural area. The project has to move from a traditional way of subsidies to a way of business-oriented support. Means if you have to provide equipment, there is a cost sharing. Means beneficiary have to give something because they have an action plan, they have a business plan. In these two tools, they know what is required in terms of equipment, infrastructure and so. So they can say, uh, we as target group, we can provide this on cash money. We can provide this on credit. We can provide this on uh, manual working. And then the project can say, according to our objective, the project can supply this and this. Also, what is not covered, but identified as necessary to implement the action plan, we raise found from other projects. And it was very easy because once you have strong teams, strong cooperative association who are skilled, it's very easy to get found from other projects. And it is what we did, but also the job was facilitated by the fact that cooperative association, small enterprise, have already their found. Mobilized, not like uh, what we call a contribution, but as shareholding approach. Once target value chains are selected through a consultation with stakeholders and governments, FAO conducts a value chain analysis to identify the main opportunities and constraints. Following this analysis, all the stakeholders are brought together to prepare a participatory value chain strategic planning. All the arrangements and the methodologies are developed by the stakeholders themselves, while the project's only role is to facilitate debate and decision making. Here in Corundo, farmers are selling their rice to the cooperative at a premium price, and the cooperative will then take care of the grinding and the marketing. Training and machinery were provided by the project, but the salaries of the cooperative staff are already paid by farmers' contributions. Better yields and better revenues are also allowing farmers to buy more land to increase their single productive capacity. Even if the harvesting season is still at the beginning, the rice mill is already fully operational. The quantity and quality of the rice produced by the members of the 10 cooperatives from Corundo are now so well known that they are having a meaningful impact on the rice market at a national level. And farmers are proud because, as they say, the taxes that they pay to the municipality will contribute to the development of the entire country. Uganda. The same principle is applied in Kabale district, where hundreds of potato growers got together to form five large cooperatives. Aiming at a market-oriented production, they received specific training not only to raise the quantity, but also to improve the quality of their crops. They built warehouses for potatoes and warehouses for potato seeds. A part of the harvest is kept for personal use or sold locally, but the rest, the major part, has reached a standard where it can gain more profitable markets around the country and abroad. 
to avoid intermediaries taking advantage of the farmers. Information about prices is gathered by associates in the various districts and spread by mobile phone and email. A special customer for the potato growers of the Kabali district was identified in Nando's, a well-known restaurant serving fast food in the capital, Kampala. The owner buys four tons of potatoes every month, paying a premium price for their high quality. He cuts, washes and fries the potatoes and serves them as side dishes or as appetizers. A good example of a business-to-business -business link among value chain actors, farmers and retailers, finding a mutual interest and growing together. Still, the potato growers of Kabale and Kisoro districts are looking ahead and exploring new ways to develop the potential of their produce a local potato processing plant for frozen French fries. An agreement facilitated by FAO between the producer's organization, the processing plant and local government was stipulated to commercialize potatoes throughout the country, helping to industrialize the district through value addition. The processing plant supplies agricultural inputs and loans to the producer. It provides a premium price for the potatoes and has to convert the funds advanced by the government extension agency into shares of the company on behalf of the farmers. The farmers, on their part, have to pay back the loans from the processing plant after the harvesting season and assist other farmers to develop business skills such as accountancy and financial literacy and technical skills to produce good quality potato seeds. Kabale, Uganda, another example of successful business linkages that benefit all stakeholders. These carpenters are making Langstroth beehives for the local beekeepers cooperative. Shed and machinery belong to the cooperative and the carpenters signed an agreement where they have to produce 10 modern beehives a month for cooperative members at cost price. In exchange, the carpenters have the right to use the machinery for external customers. The carpenters can improve their living conditions and the beekeepers will be able to increase their productivity. Here in a forest near Kabale, two of the 80 members of the cooperative are harvesting honey from one of their 20 new beehives. Like many of their fellow members, they have learned and adopted new methods for breeding bees and producing honey. Using Langstroth hives, their harvest is 10 times greater than it would have been with traditional beehives. They are improving honey quality and sparing the lives of many bees. In endowing the forest with economic value, they are also helping to protect it. Since production has increased greatly and the quality honey merits time and dedication, to obtain a valuable final product, the beekeepers decide to bring in another partner to be responsible for honey purification and commercialization. So, after harvesting, farmers choose to sell their honey to a specialized company called the Excel Processing and Marketing Center, which signed a partnership agreement. Again, the building and equipment belong to the cooperative while the center has the role of promoting the honey and finding a reliable market. If the farmers are not satisfied by the contract expiry date, they can change company and stipulate another contract. The farmer's interest is in the company's interest, and vice versa. Burundi, Kayansa district. 80% of the passion fruit produced in the country comes from this area. Here, around the village of Motongo, the land is fertile and the passion fruit excellent. Farmers need an important commercial outlet to match the value of their product. Farmers already have an important outlet in the region and are moving towards export to European markets to increase their revenue. <laughs> Kenya, 
I was a farmer. I was born from a modest family with a modest uh, income and uh, I couldn't see if agriculture would bring me much uh, profit. That's why I decided to move on to another profession, that of selling passion fruit. We carried on doing our profession and we grew more and more passion fruit so that what we grew was taken by local traders. But as we grew more and more, we were not in position to, to sell all our production. That's why we decided to sell it at Gozi, a bigger town, and also Bujumbura, which is the capital city, until we reached neighboring countries like uh, Uganda and Rwanda. As we were selling to Uganda, we didn't get much profit because farmers used to bring us production so that uh, we couldn't get uh, needed profit uh, for uh, our activity. That's why we were not happy until the time when FAO came in, looked at the way we were producing and uh, started giving us training which could help us reach much more production. The FAO facilitated gathering of association of farmers, association of traders, association of exporters, so that both associations work together. And FAO also provide them with documents which are needed for establishing a cooperative and also facilitated accountancy training and also uh, access to uh, documents which could enable them to export. Of course, it could be very difficult to get profit by working in isolation. We had to work with farmers by giving some kind of incentive, and this incentive came from unit price per kilogram. We increased up to uh, 500 Burundi francs per kilogram. And uh, then they produced more, and they produced also passion fruit of quality. And we managed to get an outside market in Rwanda where we managed to sell 25,000 tons. And uh, with this big amount of if sold quantity, we could get much more profit. Another component of the project in Matongo is the production of an excellent, refreshing passion fruit juice. Its quality would satisfy the demands of both national and export markets. But, at present, some problems are slowing down the farmers' efforts. Frequent and endless power cuts in the area are preventing the juice from finding the success it deserves on the market. Uganda, Western Province, close to the Bewindi impenetrable forests. Cattle fed on planted grass to protect the local vegetation and cattle fed on chopped fodder under the zero grazing program promoted to counterbalance the limited availability of natural pastures. The improved breeds recently introduced produce much more milk than the local ones. Milk was once just a product for immediate consumption, but now it's a high-value, marketable commodity. Farmers, all members of the same cooperative, bring their daily production to collecting points like this one in Rubaguri. Here the milk is tested, registered and stored in coolers waiting to be delivered to the milk processing plant by a truck owned by the cooperative.
In the Burunga Dairy Industries processing plant, owned by a private company, the milk is pasteurized and packaged. The plant processes 18 to 20,000 liters a day, with a view to reaching 40,000 liters. Quality and nourishment values are the main goals, and all hygienic principles are fully respected. The dairy processing plant also produces white and flavored yogurt, and will soon start separating cream from low-fat milk and to producing flavored milk. The processed milk reaches many towns across Uganda and is exported to Rwanda, Burundi, the Democratic Republic of the Congo and South Sudan. In Rwanda, the government's Gorinka, or One Cow Per Poor Family program, and the improved breeds provided by Heifer International Funding have given producers a completely new perspective. The surplus of milk production has triggered a new entrepreneurial mentality among the farmers. So, producers in the Chikumbi district got together and formed a dairy cooperative, once again assisted by FAO. In the beginning, there were 300 members, but after the first marketing problems were successfully solved, the number increased to 648, and milk production increased from 3 4,000 litres a day in 2008 to 30,000 in 2015. Besides assistance to the milk producers, the cooperative offers a variety of other services to improve the capacity of its members. It provides training, veterinary services and loans. It also manufactures animal feed from the maize produced by the members and, as a byproduct, maize flour. Flora Wera is a member of the cooperative. She is a perfect example of how market-driven agriculture can help develop new and better behaviors. She took a loan from the cooperative and now has five cows. She studied how to grow fodder on the edges of her fields and she's now teaching what she has learned to 24 other farmers. Her livelihood has improved, she pays for her children's schools and for cooking and lighting up her evenings, she's installed a biogas plant. This milk processing plant belongs to Milton Ingirente, another member of the cooperative. He wasn't doing too well as a farmer, so he decided to take on the responsibility of selling milk on behalf of the rest of the members and other producers. After a study tour at the Birunga Dairy Industries processing plant in Kizora, Uganda, he got a loan from the bank and opened what he called the Blessed Dairy Plant. He produces milk, cream, low-fat milk, flavored milk, yogurt and mozzarella cheese. He supplies Rwanda Airways and another major European airline. He provides work for 45 people and he pays the farmers a premium price because, as he says, Development has to be for all. New market opportunities offer farmers the opportunity to develop entrepreneurial skills. In Chikumbi district, the cooperative opened a milk bar, the first in the country. An innovative way to sell milk, start a new profitable activity and increase good quality, safe, certified milk consumption, reduce the consumption of alcohol, and benefit the farmers. The milk has reached such a high quality that what is not sold to the blessed dairy plant or consumed in the milk bar is sent by refrigerated truck directly from the collecting points to the Nyange dairy processing plant in Kigali. Another business-to-business -business arrangement for the benefit of both rural and urban communities.
Farming is a daily effort often carried out under difficult, harsh conditions. But it is also care, knowledge and a search for new possibilities. In a constantly changing world, the only way for farmers and all other value chain actors to face the consequences of a globalized market based on quality and price competition and challenge imported products is to add value to their own production. This would never be possible without an agribusiness development approach and entrepreneurship. These have to work not only in the interest of farmers, but also in the interest of all the other stakeholders. Transformation, value addition, improvement of quality and business-to-business -business linkages are key words for sustainable development and for increased revenues to enable investments in the agricultural sector to improve the livelihoods of rural communities for the benefit of all.